I like you, Carl, and I want to make a proposition to you. Well, I'm always open to propositions, Elmer, so long as there's something in it for me. Don't worry. There'll be plenty in it for you, all right. Well, go ahead. Shoot. What's on your mind? Easy money. Mm, sounds good. How do we get it? Robbery. Second story work? No, no, no. That's old-time stuff. Why do you know the police department has eliminated their second-story files entirely? What do you mean? Aren't there any burglaries anymore? Oh, sure. But there are mighty few two-story houses. Oh, I get it. We just break in the side windows of bungalows. No, no. Nothing as crude as breaking in. We're admitted by the maid or the butler. Say, what are you talking about? It's a fact. The simplest way in the world to pull a job. You get uh, cooperation from the entire family. Well, let's hear how it's done. First, I want to know if you're interested. I've worked with a lot of partners in the past, and it all has been washouts. But I like you, and I think we can work well together. No, well, I do, too. Now, how's it done? Well, it's like taking candy from a baby. First, we get the load down. Fancy dinner, I like to shop for myself. Having quite a party, are you? No, no, just a few special friends. Well, if they don't think this is the finest steak they ever tasted, you you, you tell me about it. No, indeed I will, Mr. Harris. Let me see now. It'll be uh, 280. Let me see. Two, two, 280. Here you are. Thank you, Mrs. Thompson. Here, Johnson, carry these to the car. Get that. She's our customer. What did it be, gentlemen? Oh, uh, uh, give me a pound of hamburger for the dog. Uh, yes, sir. Carl, oh, you see those diamonds she was wearing? Yeah. Having a party for a few friends. That's just where we want to be. And she shops with a chauffeur. That sounds like so, too. She must have about two grand of ice on her right now. Just about. Say, while I'm paying off this butcher, follow her out and get the license number of a car, will you? What for? So we can trace her address. Oh, I see you. I guess this is the place. A lot of cars outside. Yeah, that's the number, all right. Pull up here. What time is it? Uh, 7.10. Good. That ought to be a dinner now. Let's go. Hey, not up the front walk. We go around the back. Well, cars out there. A fifth arrow, two Cadillacs, and a Rolls. Well, there ought to be some dough here. Yep, looks pretty good. There's a dining room window. Good. They're all eaten. Hey, will you look at those stones on that fat dame? Yeah, she's got about two grand in the bazoom. What's the idea of knocking them over at dinner time? There might be more guests later in the evening. Yeah, but you see, when you walk in while they're at dinner, the chances are everybody in the house is at the table. And you don't run the risk of anyone upstairs calling the cops. And boy, if there's one thing I don't want is to get pinched. I don't want any flat foot dick beating my brains out. Yeah, well, I agree with you there. So, well, here's the kitchen door. Let's see. Yeah. Just a maid in there. That's fine. Now get your gun out and follow me. Okay. Yeah, what do you want? Keep quiet. Quiet, I said. If you don't make any noise, nothing will happen to you. Oh, mister, please don't shoot that gun. Please don't. If you don't make any noise, I won't. All right, I do anything you say. All right, I do anything you say. I'd be good. That's sensible. Now, you walk ahead of us and lead us into the dining room. All right, you can. All right, you can. All right, you can this way. And remember, I've got... This way. And remember, I've got... This way. And remember... I've got, and remember, I've got, and remember, I've got this gun pointed right at your back. 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 Leave it quiet. 
Now lead the way. Now lead the way. Now lead the way. I beg your pardon, madam, but some gentlemen... Why, Hildewa, what is the meaning of this? Who are these men? I apologize, Mrs. Thompson, for interrupting your dinner. Why, how dare you get out of my house at once? We will leave as soon as we get what we came for. Uh, you will observe I am armed. Oh! Uh, 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 there's no cause for alarm. We don't intend to harm anyone. Oh! Look here, man. My wife's fainted. I regret very much that I frightened her. Oh, Hilda, Hilda, go upstairs and get my smelling salt. Don't move, Hilda. The lady will recover in a moment, I'm sure. In the meantime, no one is to leave the table. Now, uh, let's get down to business. You're wasting my time, and I'm sure I'm wasting yours. So if you'll all kindly place your jewelry, watches, and uh, other valuables on the table before you... See here, you can't get away with it. I can and I will. Although, as I said before, I don't wish to do anyone harm. Still, if one of you were to be foolish enough not to uh, cooperate, I might be forced to use this gun. And I assure you it is loaded. So would you like proof? Oh, no, 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 please. Very well. Now, if you'll just uh, dump your valuables on the table, and you pick them up, Carl. Right. Oh, 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 the pocketbook, too, sir. <laughs> Please don't hold back. You see, I rely on the honesty of you ladies and gentlemen. I should hate to subject you to the indignity of searching your person. Oh, and that other ring, too, Mrs. Thompson. Oh, oh that's my wedding ring. Oh, please let me keep it. Let me see. You have uh, lovely hands, Mrs. Thompson. Why, well, how... Oh, oh, thank you. Hmm. Six diamonds set in platinum. You're asking quite a bit when you ask to keep such a splendid piece as this. Uh, I'm afraid that I uh, would have to... Oh, no, oh, no. It, it hasn't been off my fingers since I was married. Do you love your husband, Mrs. Thompson? Why, well, certainly I do. How long have you been married? Five years. And you still love your husband? Why, yes, why, of course I do. <laughs> well, you may keep the ring, Mr. Thompson, and may you never take it off your finger for 45 more years. Oh, why, thank you. Got that everything else, Carl? Yeah. Fine. Well, thank you very much, my friend. And once more, Mrs. Thompson, may I apologize for the intrusion? Now, uh, although we came in by the back door, we will leave by the front. It would be not wise for any of you to go near that door for at least five minutes after we have left. Good night. And once more, many thanks. Come on, Carl. Now, never in my life have I been held up so gracefully. <laughs> Hey, Mr. Lawrence. Hello, Herman. I want you to meet Carl Walkley, my partner. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, another partner, Mr. Lawrence? Yeah, but this one's going to stay. How about it, Carl? Yeah, that's right. If Herman gives us any sort of a deal. Oh, you can count on Herman. We've been doing the business for some time. Yeah, and we've been both making money, huh, Mr. Lawrence? <laughs> right. Uh, what have you here for me today? Hmm? Some pretty nice stuff. Say, uh, nobody will disturb us, will they? Nah, nah. My girl is out for the lunch, all right. Good. Take a look at this. Mm. <laughs> what beautiful stones. Mm, not bad, huh? No, let me see uh, yeah. but, but I've seen this stone here before. Which one? The, the center diamond in this pouch. I, I bought that from Hunky Davis two years ago. Yeah? Uh, so Mrs. Thompson isn't above buying hot stuff, eh? She probably didn't even know it. A veil when Hunky bought it in, it was in the ring. Poor Hunky. He was great artist in his line. But the police got him for a night. He, he, he made the mistake of running in the opposite direction when he was told to stop. <laughs> ah, those bulls. Boy, I'm telling you, they don't give you a break. That's the one thing that scares me. Getting picked up. I don't want any big flap for beating me over the head with a piece of rubber hose. Nine, but, but in your... Thelma, 
You have got to be prepared always to take him to rap. Uh, the way Carl and I work, we've got better than an even chance of never being picked up. We always use gloves, so there are no fingerprints. Yeah. And we always hide our faces behind our lapels, so we won't be recognized. Yeah, Elmer's got a pretty good system, Herman. Looks like we ought to clean up. Well, that's all. That's all pays with me, boys. The more business you do, <laughs> the more there is in it for me. <laughs> Why, it's getting so you can't sit down to dinner in your own home and be sure that these hoodlums aren't going to interrupt your meal with a hold-up. Oh, I know it. Just think. Three robberies right in the neighborhood in the last week. Pass me this pound, will you, dear? Thanks. Well, I'll tell you this. If they ever dare to come in here, I'll get, uh, well, they'll get the sort of reception they don't expect. What do you mean? I brought my revolver downstairs, and it's right in the desk in the living room now. Oh, Henry, you wouldn't shoot them, would you? I certainly would, and shoot to kill. You forget, my dear, that I come from a frontier family. My grandfather knew how to handle such things, and so do I. I'm prepared for them. Uh, They can't scare me. What was that? Oh, uh, nothing. Uh, the cat, probably. You know, Martha, men of the type of these so-called dinner party bandits have no courage. They're little rats. Uh, they are wrong, and we are right. And right makes wrong, and we are right. And right makes right, you know. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Henry, I hear someone in the kitchen. Listen. I don't hear anything. I'm sure that someone's out there. Go see, will you? What? Go see who's in the kitchen. Oh, now, 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 my dear, I am sure you're imagining things. There's no necessity of my going out there, and besides, I haven't finished my dinner yet, and... Uh... Uh, good evening. What? Uh, who are you? No, no, please. This is a hold-up. Oh! Uh, please don't shoot that gun. Please. No, 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 don't get excited. Don't worry about it. Just do as I tell you. Carl, uh, take a look around upstairs. Okay. Hurry up, Carl. We don't want the people's dinners to get cold. Oh, you have a nerve breaking into a person's house like this. Oh, Martha, Martha, don't antagonize the man. Antagonize him? <laughs> if he didn't have that gun in his hand, I'd do worse than that. Martha, Martha, be quiet. Not have any arguments, my friend. Oh, what is it you want? Uh, please take it and go. Just as soon as possible. Now, uh, if you kindly hand over your pocketbook, sir, and uh, that wristwatch. Here. And uh, you, ma'am... I'd like your wristwatch, too. And, ooh, that diamond ring. <laughs> Thank you. Why, that's a beauty. Now, have you given me everything? Yes, all I have. Uh, but there's some silverware there. Take that. Take anything, but please, please get out of here with that gun. Well, thank you, but the silver is too bulky to carry. Well, I got some I... more jewelry upstairs and a couple of fur coats. Okay, let's go. Good night, my friend. And uh, many thanks. Well, Henry. The idea. The very idea. It's an outrage. That's what it is. I'll stop them. I'll get my gun. Oh, yes, do, Henry, now that they're safely out of reach. For the tenant of a frontier family. <laughs> Devil, you take those fur coats for. Well, gee, Elmer, they're worth something. Listen, I've told you half a dozen times they're no good. There's too much trouble to get rid of them. And still you insist on lifting them every job we pull. Now throw them out of the car. Oh, Elmer. Go ahead, dump them over. It's good and dark here. Okay. Now there goes this swell caracal and a fox neck piece. Say, Elmer, can't I keep this meat for my girl? Well, all right. But, but for Pete's sake, don't snatch any more furs. All right, Elmer. Here's a watch that's no good. What's the matter with it? It's got initials on it. I don't want to handle anything that can be identified. Throw it out. All right. It seems as if we throw away more stuff than we keep. No, don't worry, pal. We didn't do so badly. That diamond I got from the dame will bring us over a grand. You kill me, Elmer. The way you put on the rich for the customers and then talk my language when we're alone. <laughs> Uh, 
Such are the operations of the dinner party bandits. Their modus operandi is always the same. During the four years that they operate, they become well known to scores of wealthy residents of Beverly Hills, San Marino, Hollywood, Long Beach, and the Wiltshire District, as they relieve private citizens of nearly a quarter million dollars in valuables and cash in 80 separate robberies. Among the victims are many prominent people, including Navy officers, the ex-chief of police of Long Beach, Mr. and Mrs. Clifford Deacons of Beverly Hills, and many others. Police of five Southern California cities intensify their efforts to apprehend the men. But the care with which they perform their raids makes identification next to an impossibility. Dozens of victims scan the mug books of the police department, but with no success. For neither of the dinner party bandits has ever been in custody. Twenty-five suspects are arrested at various times, but have to be released for lack of identification or sufficient evidence. A man in Long Beach is arrested for the robbery, but the dinner party bandits continue to operate. And then, just after New Year's, a resident of the Wilshire district, returning home late one night, scares the bandits away before they have a chance to make a haul. He telephones the description to the police. And Captain McCaleb, head of the detective bureau at Wilshire Station, calls his men in for a conference. Well, boys, <laughs> at last I've got a description of our uh, big headache. What do you mean, the dinner party bandits? Yeah, well, that's, well, uh, it may be a wild goose chase, but I want you to run it down. Last night, a man over on Rimpo surprised two bandits in his house. They were frightened, and they ran out. Number one wore a tan overcoat, and number two, gray overcoat. Now, that tallies with a description given by other recent victims. Now, these two suspects drove off in a black five-window Ford coupe. There isn't much to go on, Captain. Well, I know it, Ferguson, but uh, I want you boys to go after it. I'm going to ask you to work harder than you ever did before. I want you to go out in pairs, patrol the district in your own car. Cruise around them. You pick up a five-window black Ford coupe. I'm asking you to spend your own time on this case, but I think that you all agree that we want to clear it up once and for all. That's right, Captain. Will you do it, then? For days, the detective force at the Wilshire Station puts in long hours overtime, cruising their district, searching for the wanted bandits. Then on the afternoon of February the 1st, at the corner of 4th and Kenmore, Detectives Parker and Perry discover a car answering the description of the bandit's vehicle. As they approach it, they find a middle-aged man and a youth working on the radio under the dashboard. Los Angeles police calling car 71, car 71, the corner of Pico and Western, a disturbance. Seems to work all right now. Yeah. Convenient to have a police radio in your car, isn't it? What? What? I didn't see you standing there. Didn't suppose you did. We want to talk to you. Who are you? Police officer. You're under arrest. What for? Suspicion of robbery. Oh, there must be some mistake. Why, my name is Reynolds, David Reynolds. I'm a retired rancher. Uh, I've never robbed anyone. Well, if you're okay, of course, we don't want to bother you. Well, I certainly am okay. You won't mind if we search your car? What for? Gun. No, go ahead. Take a look in the rumble seat, Ernie. Right. You see? Well, I haven't any gun. No, I can't find any. But I found something pretty interesting. What's that, Henry? A couple of coats answering the description of those worn by the men we're looking for. Here, look at them. Yeah, you're right. Well, I guess you guys are going along to station with us. While Parker and Perry question Lawrence at the police station... Detectives Bergeron and Clark ride around with Lawrence's friend, George. Now, George, you can save us all a lot of time and trouble by taking us to the house of Lawrence's partner. I don't know where he lives. Now, listen, we know who he is. It's only a matter of time until we bring him in. Oh, go ahead. I'm not stopping you. Well, that's no kind of an attitude to take. Well, I'm not going to squawk on a friend, see? You're doing yourself a lot of harm, George. If you persist in this attitude, you may get into serious trouble. Yeah? What do you mean? You're withholding from the police important information, which, as a citizen, you should be willing to give. We haven't anything on you. We know you're not mixed up in this. 
But we do know who Lawrence's partner is, and we want you to take us to him. Yeah? Well, I don't want to be a heel. You're not being a heel in helping us. We know who he is anyway. Oh, well, all right, then. I'll show you where he lives. Fine. That's more like it. Which way? Turn left, the next block. That's it. The white apartment house in the middle of the block. Fine. Go in behind this red coupe car. Mm. That's his car, I think. Well. Hey, the motor's running in that car. All set for a getaway, eh? Mm. Hey, here he comes out of the apartment house now. Okay, let's take it. You're under arrest, mister. Oh, oh, so you're caught up with me, eh? Well, that's the top. Well, I'm afraid, were you? Yeah. I saw you pinch my pal, so I figured I'm leaving town. I just dropped by for some things, and I was going to fix up a mouthpiece for Elmer and take it on the lamb. You boys beat me to it. Yeah, we have a habit of doing that. Oh, well, you can't win a pot on every hand. Come on, let's go. <laughs> by the suave and self-possessed bandits. The police are enabled to trace much of the stolen property through an elaborate system of fences to ultimate purchases in all parts of the country. Lawrence and Walkley readily confess to their long string of robberies and furnish the police with minute details of each job. They are quite philosophical about it. Well, we've had a lot of fun these last four years. Now I guess it's time for you boys to have your fun. Well, I... I can tell you this, Lawrence, you know, we're mighty glad to get you two. We used to call you our headache around here. Yeah, I can imagine. We sure had you guys guessing for a long time. Yeah, but you know, you you can't play your game and win forever. Sure, we realize that. But it was fun while it lasted. Oh, and say, Captain, there's one matter Elmer and I want you to fix up. Well, what's that? Well, we found out that you're holding some poor guy over at the county jail for some Long Beach jobs. Mm-hmm. We pull everyone he's accused of. Mm-hmm. Just a case of mistaken identity. You'll let him go, won't you? Well, sure we will. But if he's innocent... Oh, he's innocent, all right. And Carl and I don't want to see anyone else taking the rap for us. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. I'll, I'll take it up right away. Say, I want to thank you, boys, for the way that you've worked with us. It's okay, Captain. Mm-hmm. You know, Carl and I had a horror of being arrested. Mm-hmm. We figured you bulls were all blackjack swinging bums. <laughs> Well, this is wrong. We want you to know we appreciate the square deal we got from you. Well, thanks, boys. You know, it isn't very often that I hear a speech like that in my line of work. <laughs> well, Captain, they used to say it was a pleasure to be held up by us. <laughs> well, I might change that a bit and say the same thing to you. It's a pleasure to be arrested by you. <laughs> Duty. They were tried before Judge Durand, and on April 5th, both were sentenced to San Quentin for from 14 years to life on two counts of first degree robbery. These two men represent a type of criminal that is relatively rare. They were almost fictional characters in their gallantry and suavity. They were not vicious, but nevertheless, they were enemies of society. They assumed that they could take from others and give nothing in return. They broke the law. And although it took many men four years to catch them, they finally were forced to pay the penalty for their misdemeanors. They finally helped prove once again the mighty truth. Crime does not pay. Thank you, Chief Davis. Ladies and gentlemen... For police car performance, use Rio Grande cracked gasoline with tetraethyl. Now, you have heard us make this statement many, many times. But have you ever stopped to think how important it really is? As one example, do you realize that in Los Angeles, the average police radio car travels 216 miles per day or 78,840 miles per year? These miles are traveled under all sorts of conditions. 
These cars must be ready to start on a moment's notice. They must be able to travel at high speed or cruise along slowly but surely. These requirements give you an idea of the job that must be done by the gasoline selected. That is why we are so proud of the fact that in the great Southwest, where Rio Grande cracked his soul, more police cars, fire engines, ambulances, motorcycles, and other emergency equipment use Rio Grande Crack than all other brands combined. And that is why we say, for police car performance, use Rio Grande Crack with Tetra Ethel. Please calling all cars, attention all cars. Cancellation broadcast 27. Suspects the Wilshire District robbery is now in custody. That's all. Rose and Clerk. Calling all cars is written and produced.